아. 아. I wonder. I wonder how many views from this video under within under 24 hours are good dear friends at YouTube who are who are so concerned about your children but yet allow pornographic material on here and are so unbiased. <laughs> I wonder how many views in under 24 hours they're going to take away from this video. Bless your heart and soul. <laughs> it's a joke. It's laughable. It's laughable. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's been, um, been, it was the month of April. <laughs> wow, that was, uh, that was quite an interesting month for us. Quite an in interesting month. And very educational, very instructive, very corrective. It's a hard month last month. We went through a lot. We lost a lot. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because those who don't follow the true Lord Jesus Christ of the scriptures, but follow a devil, we don't want anything to do with. And those who will not take correction, who will have no one to rule over them, especially the Lord, we, we want nothing to do with those types of people. And you know what? Every once in a while, dear brethren, you have to recognize and live by the principle and the teaching in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. What God do you love? The God of the scriptures? Or some figmentation of your imagination? Hmm? A God of your own creating? A God who is like yourself? Hmm? To them who are the called according to his purpose. Somewhere within all of our lives is the church of God, which is the church of the living God, ground and pillar of truth you gotta you gotta fall back on that verse you gotta fall back on that verse and and with what is if you're in my nation of america whatsoever unless you're totally blind as a bat you've noticed that things have been prices have been going ooh, up up <laughs> to the sky skyrocketing uh, for example, a while ago, my wife and I, when we were at the uh, Walmart getting supplies, you know, a little can of uh, a little can of chicken broth, which is fifty cents. Something like what? Three days later, it was up to sixty-seven cents. Now it's like almost a dollar. Okay. And gasoline, when I <laughs> yeah, but prices are increasing. That's because the Jesuits did something within the um, the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve, if you do not know, the Federal Reserve is the banking system of the Pope, of the Jesuit order. Uh, I will leave in the description box a video, which a uh, very good video, which uh, gives you a lot of information about the Jesuit order and also the Jesuit Reserve, Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, The Federal Reserve, that is the Jesuits Bank. And they, I think they're doing six, six, what is it, rate hikes or something like that? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, but I know that they're doing something, which is raising prices here in America. It brings to mind of the Weimar Republic. 
Uh, and you can read about that uh, from uh, the testimony of, uh, of Alberto Rivera, brother Alberto Rivera. But um, yeah, in the Weimar Republic, which had paper fiat currency, uh, they would, uh, in the one thing of uh, brother Alberto Rivera, they, they, he, uh, Jack T uh, Chick drew a picture of a guy with a wheelbarrow full of paper money trying to buy a gallon of milk and said that wasn't enough. Our times are coming. Our times are coming. And uh, hopefully this week, um, what will come this week We'll have something to do with with that, with that 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 you know for this week. We'll we'll see what the Lord will do. Got some pretty pretty good stuff that the Lord has shown me, and I want to share it with you. And on that, get your authorized version of the scriptures, and follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at what we are going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at Psalm 13. I'm going to share with you some of the things that the Lord shared with me. Brethren, are we ready? Are we ready? Do you know that the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, who are your enemies, want nothing more than to destroy you? Want nothing more than to see you desolate? There are those in these days who, th when they kill you, think that they're doing God service. And yes, they are doing their little G, God service. Of course, God who they visually see, of course. But shh, enough on that. We're going, to be doing a, uh, we're going to be reading Psalm 13 and doing some expository stuff along the way. Hopefully we can finish this uh, psalm within the three-hour period. <laughs> but I want to share with you some of what he shared with me. So please, follow me along. Psalm 13, verse 1. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? Ever felt like you were forgotten of the Lord? Oh, of course not. There are some of you who have to manipulate people through the scriptures to get what you want, but... No, most, <laughs> most, you know, the common, not the esoteric of the Church of the Living God. Um, sometimes we do feel like the Lord has forgotten us, don't we? Don't we? How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Now, this is a figure of speech, okay? Uh, we, we talked about this all last week. Okay, um, this is a figure of speech. Um, David did not see the Lord's face, okay? <laughs> okay, what he's meaning about is relational presence, that kind of thing. How long, uh, you know, make your face to shine upon me, okay? That's what, it's a figure of speech, okay? But, Isaiah 49, Isaiah 49, Isaiah 49. One second, I, I need two sets of scriptures. That's easier. One, one second, one second. All right, sorry about that. I should have... Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Two-fisted, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and that's... I don't... You don't have to do that. That's easier for me. But, okay. Psalm 13, verse 1 again. How, oh, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Isaiah 49, verses 13 on to verse 17. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. You know how it says in uh, Timothy, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. But if we deny him, 
he will deny us. Deny him. How will he deny us? In rewards, in provision, in grace, in mercies, in kindness. Salvifically, salvation, no. That's not talking about salvation. But if we deny him in life, in testimony, he can deny us a whole lot of things. Are you aware of that? Hmm? But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand. Thy walls are continually before me. Right there, graving thee upon the palms of my hands. Okay? Making reference to, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, his crucifixion. See, you get these people too, and this is a pet peeve of mine, who say that Christ, when he was crucified, crucified through the wrists. No. The nails went through his hands. Through his hands. The hand is not the wrist, okay? Okay? Pet peeve, pet peeve, okay? Just, just, just to let you know. Let's continue. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Shall go forth, shall go away from you. Shall go forth of thee. Hmm. They were not all of us. Hmm. Interesting. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face far from me? Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, verses 4 on to verse 10. Fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thine husband. We are the bride of Christ. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of you, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment, for a small moment, have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. And for that, did I write that down here? Uh, yeah, we'll read that in another part. But for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord my Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart. Now, mountains depart. Speaking, you know, number one, maybe of earthquakes or something like that. But... In a figurative way, people who are as firm and as strong and as stubborn as a mountain, making maybe a reference unto people. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy. And also the way the Lord, way the Lord are, are that. The way our Lord is using this as an example, okay? 
Mountains are star, uh, you know, mountains are mountains. How are they going to move unless an earthquake or unless the Lord moved them? The example that he's giving is that Mount Everest will move before what? Before neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. See, when the Lord saves you, you are eternally secure. You are once saved, always saved. No matter what, you cannot lose your salvation. Why? Because it's not yours to lose. You can lose a whole lot of other things, but you're going to be with the Lord in heaven after you die. That's one thing you can't lose. That's one thing you can't lose. And the example, like I said, mountains, there are places in scripture where mountains and hills are references unto people. But see, the way our Lord is using it here in verse 10, is comparing it on to his covenant of peace. The mountain will move before his covenant of peace moves. Hmm. Psalm, Psalm 103. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou, wilt thou hide thy face from me? Far from me? Excuse me, hide thy face from me? Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verses 9 on to verse 18. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. How are you doing today? Better than I deserve. Our best friend, you ask him that, our brother. How are you doing today, brother? Oh, better than I deserve. How are you doing today, Brad? <laughs> Better than I deserve. He hath not, and this is written in the Old Testament under the law. Roll that around your head. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Ever been afraid of the Lord before? <laughs> you better be. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. He remembereth that we are dust. Verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. If the Lord dealt with us according to our sins, there'd be none of us left. Even though those of you Christians, you know, so self-righteous and pious, uh, if he dealt with us after our sins, even for the most pious and righteous Christian, and even for the meekest, the most humble of the church of the living God, there'd be none of us left. There'd be none of us left. That includes you. That includes me. <laughs> I love verse 15 here. I love verse 15. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. The, the, the flowers spring up, you know, looking green, and then they bloom, and then they go away. Who comes on, who dances, and frets his stuff upon the stage, and then to be heard of no more. It is the tale told of an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Amen. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know, shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. You ever been afraid of the Lord before? And his righteousness unto children's children, 
to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Now, this is talking about works because it was faith and works under the law. But there again, today, when the Lord saves you, you come to him on his terms, okay? Broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon the name of the Lord. In fear of him, you call upon the name of the Lord, okay? Not a mechanical, you just call. If you're not calling on him out of fear of him, it's like, oh, wow, um, you need to check yourself whether or not you're truly saved, okay? But looking at verse 15 again, as for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. <laughs> How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? We do remember that we are not the be-all, end-all of everything, right? Right? Isaiah 40, verses 6, on to verse 8. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. Take that, those of you who worship flesh. The grass withereth. The, the flower fadeth because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The word of our God shall stand forever. Amen and amen. And see, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face far from me? Excuse me. <laughs> How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Excuse me. Far is not in there. There could be reasons. There could be reasons why the Lord is hiding his face from some of you. There could be reasons. Why? Well, let's, let's look at this a little bit. Psalm 51 Verses 7 on to verse 12. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face far from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Dispensational difference here. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because under this dispensation, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, you know, the Spirit of God could come and go, come and go, come and go, come and go. It wasn't permanent under the law. See, and like we have discussed about all last week with these charismatics, you know, the anointing is, an, uh, is, an, uh, is on me and that kind of stuff, okay? Dispensational difference. Instruction for our righteousness today, yes, but dispensational difference there. When the Lord saves you, you are saved, and it's his salvation, not yours. And the Holy Ghost will, that dwells within you will not leave you, or else God's word is a liar. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. With thy free spirit. And see, a dispensational difference here. See, yes, he gives the Holy Ghost today unto those people freely, but they have to come to him on his terms, not their own. You don't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, okay? And also in this context, free spirit, free to come and go, come and go. So how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Hmm. Hmm. Why? Could it be as it is in Psalm 51? Or what about the contrast? Second Corinthians. 
You know, when when you're talking about this kind of subject, all you got to do is remember the book of Job. There was no reason other than whatever the Lord had for him to allow Satan to do what he did on Job. Towards the end of the book of Job, Job started being a little boastful. And, and that's, it, it was his fault. It wasn't at gunpoint by God, definitely, or at gunpoint by the devil, definitely. But see, Job was attacked constantly, constantly being attacked and accused by his friends. <laughs> With friends like that, who needs enemies, right? <laughs> But towards the end of that, uh, the book of Job, Job was starting to get a little puffed up in his suffering. But bad things happen to those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, it comes for correction and chastisement. Yes, for sin. But also, to the contrast to it is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 11. Not 1 Corinthians, Brad. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 11. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength. And so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. There can come a point in your life where you think that you're trusting in the Lord, but when you take a step back and look at it, it's like, no, you were trusting more on man. Are you trusting more in yourself? And just asking God to add a little of his flavor to what you're already doing? Or are you truly Christ-dependent? As we are. Are you? <laughs> we better hope so, especially with what's coming up right now, huh? What's coming on? What's going to be coming upon this nation? Oh, you think things are smooth sailing at the moment. You're, you're deceived. You're deceived, brethren. Oh, no. Oh, no. And remember, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 now. Verses 4 on to verse 10. But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tolments, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, and yet true, as unknown, and yet well-known, as dying, and behold, we live as chastened and not killed. And I know that disappoints a whole lot of you. That brings a smile to my face when I think about that, about your disappointment, you wicked devils. You know this annoying, creepy smile? <laughs> yeah, it brings a big smile to my face because it's supposed to happen that way. When we're doing what the Lord will have us to do, we're going to meet with this. It means things are going right. As he would have it to be done. As sorrowful, yet always, yet always rejoicing. More on that in coming videos this week. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. 
Because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he dwells within you. So God, who created the heaven and the earth, dwells within you. What more do we need? How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? One second, brethren. Verse 2 in Psalm 13. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Ooh. Ooh. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Whatever it is that you are going through, brother and sister, realize that it is for good. Because you are the called according to his purpose and you love God. So whether it be for correction or for example or for whatever it is, you love the Lord and you are truly his and he's dealing with you as sons and with the, as with sons and daughters, it's a good thing. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Psalm 42. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? And yeah, where's your God now, huh? Yeah. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Why art thou cast down? Is it for sin? Are you suffering for his righteousness sake? A little bit of both? What is it? What is it? You're saved of the church of the living God. You know that in the end it's going to be okay, right? No matter how they want to destroy you and see you dead and see you brought to naught. It's going to be okay. If you are of the church of the living God, of course. <laughs> if you think you are and you're not, well, you know, you got another thing coming. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Hope, what is hope? We're going to be doing a video on that sometime this week. Just got to finalize it and get some more stuff to it because that's going to be a big video. Hope. Hope is confidence and faith in something that may be within grasp to obtain. That's why, you know, you wish and uh, desire, you know. Wishes and desire, you have a wish. There's really no assurance that you may achieve it. Same with the desire. But with hope, there's that thing that you're clinging to that it might be obtainable that it might be given to you hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance oh my God my soul is cast down within me therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water sprouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me. And my prayer unto the God of my life. His mercies are new every morning. The fact that you are alive today, you have a chance. 
The fact that you are alive today, you have hope. You have hope for today. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, yeah. As with the sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Psalm 43. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. Amen. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God. Unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Hmm. Hmm. Also, too, you have to remember in Psalm 60, verses 11 and 12. Give us help from trouble, for vain, empty, is the help of man. Through God, we shall do valiantly. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. You remember that you are man, right? You're a woman, you're of mankind. So, okay. For vain is the help of man. Self-help. Help yourself. God helps those who help themselves. Blah. Chapter and verse. It's not in there. Uh, nothing but the opposite is taught to you in Scripture. What happens when someone depends on themselves too much? What happens when people depend on man? When flesh becomes your arm? Hmm? Isaiah 59. Now here, here's, here's, here's a little bite for you this morning. Here's a little bite for you. How long shall I take counsel of my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Here's a little bite for you. Isaiah 59, verses 9 on to verse 13. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. As dead men. And who are dead men walking today? Those who are dead in trespasses and sins. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Mm. Mm. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. It's one thing to know that you're a sinner and that you're in iniquity and whatnot. 
It's another thing entirely to know and to forsake them. Okay? It's another thing entirely. Now, that's not as meaning per salvation. Because in order to be saved, you couldn't give up your sin, even if you were being held at gunpoint to save your life. You come to the Lord broken because of it. And contrite because it is your fault and you're helpless, hopeless. There's no hope for you. And that fear, that fear, that fear of your hopelessness, that fear that nothing you can do is right in the sight of the Lord. And that fear of Him, because, because of that, unless He saves you, you're going to hell. You call upon Him. The ultimate shoe of humility. But, as the church of the living God, you can sin. You can be in sin. And you can know it. And who better to know it than we? But do you forsake that sin? Or do you continue on in it? Mm -hmm. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Mm. This you see in a lot of people who think they are saved and they are not. Preaching a trinity. Or like the charismatics. Preaching that what they are what they are because they have seen something. Hmm. Ooh, sounds, for, sounds like a real good reason for someone to be as sorrowful as David was in this psalm. Is that what was the crux of his uh, dilemma in Psalm 13? Hmm. Doesn't really say does it? But these are possible reasons. And on that, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 again. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 3 on to verse 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of of all comfort. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in it, which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. See, self-help, self-comfort. See, you try to comfort yourself. What do you do? You end up going to worldly things. You end up being distracted by the devil and his angels and by, by going to like a, a, what, television, music or something, something to divert. But when there's something going on in your walk with the Lord, you need to be heading, uh, facing it head on. Head on. But see, he is the God of all comfort. And unless you are his, how is he going to comfort you? He's not. If you are his, he will comfort you. The God of all comfort who comforteth us. Who's the us? The church of the living God. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Oh, things could look really bleak and hopeless for you. But remember who is the comforter? The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is our comfort. He is our hope. Again, more on that, more on that in another video. Not today. Not ready for that one yet, brother. Okay? Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. This, ver, uh, this uh, Psalm 27 will be um, referenced in, in another video here in the future. But Psalm 27, verses 11 on to verse 14. Teach me thy way, O Lord. 
and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's a scriptural definition of hope, if I've ever seen one. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, with the, um, with the inflation that is happening, and with what is going to be coming upon this nation, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Because of the Jesuit order and their, um, their uh, Jesuit Reserve, Federal Reserve Bank, I remember the stimuli checks that they gave out. Now it's time to pay back the Vatican. So prices are going to just keep going up and up and up and up and up. Oh, the fall of America is coming, brethren. The fall of our country is coming. Are you ready? Hmm. <laughs> Psalm 35. Psalm 35. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Psalm 35, verses 19 on to verse 21. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha! Aha! Our eye has seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, troublemakers. People uh, like Mr. M from Alberta, Canada, and many other people out there, a couple of women that I'm aware of, looking for that, aha, something, you know, the fellowship with you, to be with you, but only to find something to hang you on. That's all they look for. They're looking for something to, or to hold against you. That's Jesuit. That's what Jesuits do. They come in with their nice smiles and they're, oh, they're so meek and humble, all the while looking for the minusculest of all things to try to hang you on. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, or I have seen it, aha, aha. Always looking for something. Always trying to find dirt. Always trying to find something wrong. And those who are like that will always find it no matter what you do, brethren. And that you have to be remember. Rem uh, that you have to remember, excuse me. They're always going to do that. And some of these sly bastards who don't know who their true father is. They know who their father is because they serve him. The devil, of course, but they don't know who the true father is. Hence, they're bastards. These bastards who come in so division. Just want to break everything up. And everyone that they come in contact with, they find fault in them. Yeah. Everybody. I guess not, not everybody is as perfect as a Jesuit coadjutor, huh? Micah, chapter 7. Micah, chapter 7. Micah, chapter 7. Verses 8 on to verse 10. <laughs> Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Oh, I'm being prideful, aren't I? When I sit in darkness... The Lord shall be a light unto me. While you go on to your next assignment to try to destroy somebody. Yeah. 
Jesuit that scoundrels I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness and I love this then she that is mine enemy shall see it she mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth the mother of harlots the mother church Roman Catholicism and all her the extent of mystery Babylon in these last days is overwhelming is absolutely overwhelming you know you better be sure of your little intricate circle of people who you call friends because the deception and the infiltration is is just off the charts showing us of just how close we are to the redemption of the purchased possession. We're getting really close. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her which said it unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Yes. I, I got to admit, <laughs> it, uh, it is troubling to know that there are people out there who want you dead. There, it's troubling that there are people out there who want you, who want to see you destroyed. Well, you want, I want the people to be broken and come to salvation. But see, there, like, for example, boot the door. That, that guy, if he could, he, he'd put a bullet in my head. He'd kill me in a minute. There are a lot of people out there who would love to see me die. <laughs> and there are a lot of people who want to see me destroyed. That, that's, that's troubling. I want to see people broken and come to the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see... You know, boot the door. Yeah, you hate me, and I'm not crazy about you either. But if you were to die, you'd go to hell. I don't want that for you. Mr. M, who's working for the Jesuits. You're working for the Jesuits. You're going to hell. I don't want that for you. I don't want to see my enemies go to hell. But you got to remember our God is just. And you got to also remember, brethren, this is not just relative to me. This is relative for you too. The enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ want to see you destroyed. They want you dead. You have a devil. Who no, seeketh to slay thee? Like they said unto our Lord Jesus Christ, who put, like our Lord does, puts his finger on everything. Like with the rich young ruler, one thing thou lackest. And those same people who believed on him, after he kept speaking, our Lord Jesus Christ kept rebuking them. At the end of it, they wanted to stone him. But yet they believed on him. Didn't they? If they hated him, they will hate us. See, this isn't relative just to me. This is for you too, Church of the Living God. Oh, I don't hate him. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. These people, they hate us. They hate us. And they want to see us dead. They want nothing more than to see us destroyed. I would like to see these people destroyed to come to salvation. They say, oh, we wanted to see you. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Because there is no mercy in anything they say. There is no hope in anything they say. It's all, aha, aha. <laughs> in chastisement, the Lord always remembers mercy. 
in chastisement, the Lord always remembers mercy. Psalm 30, verses 1 under verse 5. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. Amen. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy cometh in the morning. Yes. Weep not, uh, rejoice not over me, when my enemy, when I fall. Because when I fall, I will rise up again. The Lord will be my light. When you fall, when you fall, you're going to fall down, man. You're going to fall down. A just man falls seven times and rises up again. But when you guys fall, ooh. Mm. Mm. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Verse 3. And so, uh, Psalm 13, obviously. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. And for this, oh yeah, Psalm 102. Psalm 102. The cry of the Jew. The cry of the Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble. Even you could have said uh, during the Holocaust time. Psalm 102, verses 1 and 2, verse 11, until the, until the uh, psalm shifts. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, because as we are, have already seen, all flesh is as grass. Okay. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day. And they that are mad against me are sworn against me. We have sworn enemies. You know, those who make the uh, take the Jesuit blood oath. You know, the Jesuit Oath, which you can find a link for it in the About section on this channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our enemies, brethren, are sworn against us. Sworn enemies. <laughs> My enemies reproach me all the day. Every single day. Whether it's, you know, YouTube or wicked emails or whatever. Whatever. You know? There's no, there's no rest for the wicked. <laughs> they don't rest till they make someone fall. Yeah. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath. For thou hast cast, lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. I am withered like grass. Yes, see, Psalm 102, verses 1 unto verse 11, describes brokenness. 
and the brokenness which will be evident during the time of Jacob's trouble for the Jew, specifically. But for our instruction in righteousness, you could be walking in a way that is not pleasing the Lord and he can let something fall upon you. Or you can be doing what the Lord wants you to do, but just not associating yourself with the right people. <laughs> Because the break and shift in Psalm 102, verse 12. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever. Amen. And thy remembrance unto all generations. It's right there, verse 12. Sums up this whole, sums it up. Verse 12 sums up this whole psalm. But thou, O Lord. But thou, O Lord, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. And the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Uh, on that, Romans chapter 6, this is not part of the notes, but Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, <laughs> verses 21 on to verse 23. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <laughs> Verses 55 on to verse 58. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, thou, O Lord, but thou, O Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Verse 5 in Psalm 13. But I have trusted in thy mercy. Oops, 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 oops. oops. <laughs> Come on. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Mm. One second, brethren. <laughs> I skipped a verse. I thought something was off. Yes, okay. Let's. We just read Psalm 102. <laughs> I skipped a verse. I'm sorry, brethren. <laughs> Psalm 13, verse 3. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Light mine eyes, lest I sleep to sleep of death. Sorry for that. Verse 4. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Psalm 38, Psalm 38, I got out of myself there, <laughs> Psalm 38, yes, lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Like I said, brethren, there are those out there who would 
throw a party to see some of your downfall. There are those out there who would rejoice, send gifts <laughs> one to another to see people destroyed of the church of the living God. I know there are people out there who would just rejoice uh, to not see me anymore here on YouTube. Me, of all people. There are people out there who would rejoice to see you destroyed. It's not, like I said, this is not relative just for me, but for all of you, Church of the Living God. Our time is coming to an end. This is their power and the power of darkness. Psalm 38, verses 15 on to verse 22. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. For I said, hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. Isn't that something? For I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. But <laughs> mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. Mm, amen. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries. Because I follow the thing that good is. Because I follow the thing that good is. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. My salvation. Note it doesn't say, O Lord, of my salvation there. It says, O Lord, my salvation. Our Lord is our salvation. Okay? Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. Verses 4 and 5. Proverbs 17, verses 4 and 5. A wicked door giveth heed to false lips. Amen. <laughs> and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. A lot of people like to twist this and, you know, you know, throw a party when you see the wicked perish. And it's like, well, amen. But see, what we are rejoicing in is our Lord's judgment, our Lord's justice. I'm not glad at people's calamities. I'm glad to see our Lord's justice. I'm glad to see our Lord's judgment. But I'm not glad at people's calamities. I'm not. And see, those are enemies, brethren. They are glad at our calamities, as evident every day. Okay? They are glad at our calamities. They rejoice at our fall. They rejoice at our destruction. Where well, we want to see them, their pride, their self-righteousness destroyed, that they may be saved. They just want to see us wallow in filth. Yeah. And they're usually Christians, too. Usually. <laughs> the atheists... Really have no problem with them. It's these Christians. These Christians <laughs> that our problem arises with, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Proverbs 4, verses 14 on to verse 19. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away until, unless they cause some to fall. And this, we've talked about this before, but this is, you know, I, the Lord gives me rest. The Lord lets me sleep. These people, these Christians, these coadjutors, these devils, they, they can't rest unless they've destroyed something. Like a wicked little child, they can't have fun or have anything to do with anything unless they break something, cause mischief. 
it, it's quite a thing when people make you their source of attack and stop at nothing to bring you down. It's it's quite impressive. It's like wow. Wow, you think that much of me, huh? <laughs> wow. But remember, brethren, like I said, this is not just about me. This is for you too. It doesn't matter who you are. This is the kind of attack, this is the kind of stuff that you are dealing with today. In one way or another. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. I love verse 17. Uh, the bread of wickedness, the wafer cookie, and the wine of violence, the cup, you know, Catholic. Okay? But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Amen. Amen. And Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Verses 7 on to verse 11. Psalm 41, verses 7 on to verse 11. And, and this, this right here, uh, gives me joy to remind you, my enemies. And there are a lot of them. This I like to remind you of. This gives me joy. Puts a smile on my face. <laughs> All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleave a fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. <laughs> If anybody, the, their brother or sister said that, oh, you're one of those, you're, you're sick, you got a disease, you're a part of a cult, right? You ever got that laid on you before, huh? Hmm. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. Just want to remind you of that, you, my enemies, and our enemies, brethren, Church of the Living God. Not just for me, but for you too. Because a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. <laughs> Rejoice not over me, my enemy, when I fall. Because when I fall, I will arise. The Lord will be light unto me. When you fall, you're falling down to hell. See, there's a difference between us. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. The Lord, my salvation. The Lord, my salvation. Yeah. By this I know that thou favorest me because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And also, let us remember, brethren, John 19, just one verse. John 19, verse 11. John 19, verse 11. Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Remember the book of Job. Satan needs God's permission to attack you. And when the Lord gives Satan that permission, chill, do some assessment, do some repenting, but stay your course. You know, if you've gone astray, get it right. Get right with the Lord, but stay your course. Stay your course. Fight the good fight. Don't give up. Don't quit. See, that's what they want. They want the enemies of our Lord. They want us to quit. They want us to permanently divert from the way so that they can boast themselves and say, ha, ha, ha. You know, if you've gone astray, 
Get right with the Lord. If, you, if your hand has touched something unclean, get rid of it. If there are people who are in your life, even though you love them, and the Lord doesn't want them in your life, who are you going to listen to? Your heart or the Lord who will put people away from you whom he doesn't want in your life. <laughs> but remember, and also, remember, like I said, remember Job. Satan needs permission to attack us, whether it's for correction or to make your faith even stronger. Because remember what it says in James? James said, the trying of your faith worketh, what? Patience. And it's more precious than fine gold, your faith is. Okay. Uh, Peter talks about how our faith is more precious than fine gold and stuff like that. But the trying of our faith worketh patience. Patience waiting on the Lord. See? It's twofold. For correction or to make you stronger in faith in Him. More Christ dependent. Because brethren, with what is coming upon us, Oh boy, we need Christ dependence. Don't we? And, and also now, see, and now you got to remember too, the, these devils are like, well, ha, 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 see, God's using me to get to you. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, here, there, buddy boy. You put this in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 27. <laughs> Uh, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, unless they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, remember King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, who is in heaven. Okay? King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. He was an instrument used of the Lord to chastise his children the children of Israel. But God punished that nation after King Nebuchadnezzar because King Nebuchadnezzar is in heaven. But Babylon, the destroying agent of the Lord, was also destroyed. Nazi Germany, the tool used of the Lord to chastise his people Israel as judgment. And they still haven't come to the Lord as a nation. That's what the time of Jacob's trouble is for. But there again, there again, God allowed it. See, God allows it. But see, the enemy then starts getting puffed up, and then the Lord will destroy that enemy. Think of it this way. If the Lord is using you as a form of judgment... And you're one of these wicked devils. The the kind the <laughs> your payback for doing such is not good. It's not good. Be careful, you people. Careful, you know, hurting yourself by patting yourself on the back. Oh boy, yeah. You think you're doing God's service? <laughs> what God are you serving? <laughs> And, and Psalm 118, Psalm 118, Psalm 118, Psalm 118, my wife's favorite, one of my wife's favorite Psalms, Psalm 118, verses 14 on to verse 20, the Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The God of all comfort will bring us through things so when he comforts us, 
those who go through the same things, we will be able to comfort them by what we went through and saw the mercy of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but hath not given me over unto death. <laughs> no way. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate to the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. Hmm. And, and, and looking at that verse 19 and 20, Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. John chapter 10. Oh, of course, you knew it, didn't you? You knew it, didn't you? John chapter 10. Verses 1. On to verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Easy believism. Both variants <laughs> of you're saved by your belief or you're saved just by your call without uh, brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Everybody's going to be saved. Ecumenicalism. Oh, uh, you've seen the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yes, climbing up some other way. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Oh, you're elect, and they're non-elect. You gave up X, Y, Z. You gave all this up, then he grant. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And he's making a reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession right here. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Again, uh, talking about the redemption of the purchased possession, but here also about, you know, verse 5. Uh, when people say, lo, there is Christ, believe it not, okay? He makes a reference on to the redemption of the purchased possession, but also here he's making a reference on to the time of Jacob's trouble. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things were they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, again, Verily, verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And when you climb up some other way, you're booting the door out of the way. A thief and a robber. <laughs> yes, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in Go in by it with Christ. We are in. We are part of his body. And out. Redemption of the purchased possession. And find pasture. The thief. Cometh not but for to kill. For to steal. And to kill. And to destroy. I am come. That they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Hmm. But I have trusted in thy mercy. Oh, excuse me. Lest, okay, verse 4, I did it again. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against them, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Now, let's get to verse 5, okay? <laughs> verse 5 and Psalm 13. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy. And the psalm that is probably my wife's most absolute favorite is psalm. Psalm 23. 
during my wife's surgery, I read this to her a couple of times. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Psalm 27. <laughs> Psalm 27, you see how he did that? See how he did that? Psalm 27, verses 1 on to verse 6. What did you do, Brad? It was right there. <laughs> Psalm 27, verses 1 on to verse 6. See this? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And that rock is Christ. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I have trusted in thy mercy. <laughs> My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. And Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Verses 27 on to verse 31. Proverbs 21. Verses 27 on to verse 31. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. Think about those who are philanthropists. Who give. But they have a wicked mind because they are deceived. A false witness shall perish. But the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face. But as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You remember that, brother, sister? No matter what we're going to be going through, all of us, even the upper echelons, sorry for stealing your catchphrase, but even the upper echelon, the elites of the church of the living God, those who God is a respecter of persons of for them, even they are going to be going through hard times coming soon. Amen. Verse 6, I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. I'll sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Sing. You want to hear a song? I'm not going to sing today. Um, there's a brother of ours. His channel is A Joyful Noise. The link for his channel will be in the description box. You want to hear some good hymns? Check him out. You want to hear some good hymns? Our dear friend, our brother Alexander Hartley. But yes, sing. 
Yes. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Ephesians chapter 5. Thank you. Verses 19 on to verse 21. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. Psalm 98. Psalm, we, we have reason to sin. Even though we might be going through some stuff, brethren, we have reasons to sin. We have reasons to sing. Psalm 98. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord hath made known his salvation, the way of the cross. His righteousness hath he, hath he openly shewed in the sight of the heathen. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blood shed on the cross it's there for everybody. You just can't boot the door out of the way and go up some other way. you got to go through the door. And you go through the door broken and contrite. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name. Okay? He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. See, look at that verse. To the Jew first. Okay? He hath remembered his mercy and truth toward the house of Israel. He came first to the Jew. He came not but to the lost, uh, go not uh, uh, except unto the lost sheep of Israel. Okay? He came to the Jew first. It's not me to cast the children's bread to the dogs. Okay? But all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of, the, of our God. Verse 3 is also encompassing that. What? The Gentiles. Okay? This, of course, Psalm 98 is for our instruction in righteousness. But that is a twofold verse to the Jew first, but then all the ends of the earth, all the ends of the earth, okay? All that your eye can see, meaning more than just a Jew, more than just Israel. And God's salvation is plain for anybody. It's right there. The problem is yourself. You gotta get over yourself. And you gotta make sure that. The God that you think you're going to is the actual God of Scripture. And he's not going to appear to you. Okay? So, let's continue. And with every, with everything intended here, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and sound of cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves. If this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it is of the Lord, you're fighting against him. Good luck with that. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. 
I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. <laughs> a froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Amen. 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 Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Whoso, whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doors from the city of the Lord. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. You know what? Hold on. Alrighty, brethren. There's a little bird that has joined me here. And you're going to hear in the background. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing praises unto our God. Sing praises. Ready, baby? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come Twas grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. <laughs> when we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. And it is grace, not twas. <laughs> that, uh, brethren, you heard in the background was my wife, your sister. Uh, this is one of her absolute most favorite song, um, hymns in the whole wide world. And, uh, yes, she just had to join us 
Uh, you'll hear my w wife's voice. You will never see her face on a video. God forbid. God forbid. But uh, yes. We have reason to sing, brethren. We have reason to sing. Though a, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. And, and, like, and like we read in Micah, like we read in Micah chapter 7. Oh, wow. And I opened it. I opened right to it. Wow, man. I opened right to it. Rejoice not. Uh, Micah 7 verses 8 under verse 10. Wow, I did. I opened right to it. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall rise when I sit in darkness. The Lord shall be light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, that is mine enemy, shall see it. And shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be thrown down as the mire of the streets. Our Lord gives us the victory in him. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our victory. He is our salvation. He is our grace. He is our mercy. He is our hope. The Lord, our salvation. He is the resurrection and the life. We have much to rejoice and sing for, brethren. Though now we go through trials and tribulations, though now God weeds out of our mists, People he doesn't want us to be with. Sad, but praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. We're going to be coming upon some hard times, brethren. We are. We are. And like I've warned you about countless times, the falling away. Oh, wow. 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 The falling away has been happening for a long time. Yes, amen. But the, <laughs> the depth of the falling away from places you would never expect. Wow. So that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to share this with you, uh, what the Lord shared with me. And um, got more videos coming this week, of course, Lord willing. Please keep us in your prayers. We need your prayers. And we pray for so many of you. And thank you for those of you who help us and support us and are there for us and pray for us. Thank you. You know who you are. And we love you very much. We love you. And we pray for so many of you. But that's going to be it. I'm going to get this uh, video uploaded. It's 10 o'clock now. So that means that the previous video, YouTube, our dear friends, have stolen or taken away how many views from that video. <laughs> It never ends with these these fine people at YouTube. I'll tell you that, man. <laughs> but see, and that's the thing. See, YouTube, you you people could take away all the views like you did in the previous video. Took away virtually all the views, apparently. Um, if one person hears, you failed. And that's the thing. All you, my enemies, all enemies of us, Church of the Living God, not just me, but you too. If one person hears a testimony, hears a word, hears the scripture, of course, the word, if one person hears through us, being an ambassador of on Christ, a minister of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. If one person hears, that means that the enemy has failed. Even though they destroy us, even though they attack us, even though they want to bring us down, if one person hears, if one person is converted, if one person is rebuked, corrected, um, exhorted, encouraged, strengthened, one person, just one, you failed. You failed. So keep that in mind, brethren. Anyway, got to go. Got things to do. We love you. And in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that 
He bless you, the brethren, the church of the living God. And we love you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.